This video is brought to you by Honey. Honey is an online shopping tool which automatically brings you coupons, promo codes, and deals. Ordering a killer pair of boots, shades, or some kind of tool online can boost your mood, but the fun gets even better when you add Honey to the game. We all know from experience that finally purchasing that item is so satisfying, and adding Honey for free can help you find savings. Just one click is enough and your favorite products become even cheaper thanks to the automated promo code search. Just look how we saved almost 30 bucks on this two-person tent. No matter what product you're looking for, Honey brings the biggest savings out there to your cart and it feels like magic. Honey works on so many of your favorite websites that you're already shopping on. So what are you waiting for? Add it to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash simple history and get your honey. Thanks, Honey, for sponsoring. When the U.S. used ghosts to spook the enemy in the Vietnam War. 1969 to 1972. The Vietnam War was an intense civil conflict between the communist North Vietnamese led by Ho Chi Minh and the South Vietnamese President Ngo Dinh Diem and his American allies, who were intent on stopping the spread of communism. As the Viet Cong soldiers prowled through the jungle in the south of the country, in total darkness, they were assaulted by eerie sounds, blaring from all directions. Music, cries, and disembodied voices calling for help. Please, brother, go back. I'm scared. Don't end up like me. They were the sounds of souls lost in battle, doomed to forever wander in pain and suffering with no hope of reaching the afterlife. At least that's what the Americans in the South Vietnamese wanted the Viet Cong to believe. Psychological warfare played a huge part in the war in Vietnam, more than in any other previous conflict. The disembodied voices in the dark were a ploy from the South to instill fear, decrease morale, and encourage desertions in the North. They called it Operation Wandering Souls. To understand why the South Vietnamese and Americans used this tactic, we first need to understand the Vietnamese beliefs about death. The Vietnamese believed in good deaths and bad deaths. Good deaths were at home, surrounded by loved ones. Bad deaths were those that occurred away from home, through violence, accident, or war, and ones where the victim could not be properly buried. The souls of these individuals were unable to find their way to the afterlife, and so wandered the earth aimlessly in pain and suffering, stuck in an eternal limbo as wandering souls. By the end of the war, some 300,000 Vietnamese were classed as wandering souls. So the South Vietnamese and Americans saw a way to capitalize on the fears that sprung from these beliefs. They recorded a mixture of eerie and unearthly sounds, banging gongs, crying children, and the disembodied voices of fallen comrades, which were played by willing South Vietnamese participants. They hoped these terrifying sounds carrying through the jungle would scare the Viet Cong, causing low morale and encouraging some to desert and flee back home for fear of becoming a wandering soul themselves. One tape used at the time remains publicly available and is known as Ghost Tape No. 10. On the tape, you can hear some of the cries recorded by South Vietnamese in a chilling supernatural voice. Go home. Go home, my friends. Hurry. If not, you will end up like me. Go home, my friends, before it is too late. The project was backed up by a leaflet dropping campaign with messages like, Is this a grave? beneath a photo of a dead NVA soldier, while on the back it said, Unfortunately, it is not, but it is the final resting place, many, many kilometers from the graves of his ancestors. His body cannot be identified, his grave cannot be marked, and his soul will never find rest. The tape was blasted through the jungles of the Vietnam War, used by both the U.S. Army and Navy. It was broadcast from loudspeakers and helicopters and boats, or by infantry deep in the jungle, who would sneak into Viet Cong occupied areas and play the tapes in the middle of the night. A U.S. Military Assistance Command Vietnam fact sheet published in December 1969 tells more of what they hoped to achieve with this psychological warfare. The document describes ghosts that were part of the rural folklore, such as the ghost pig, or Ma Heo, the ghost dog, Ma Chaw, and the ghost cat, Ma Mail. 
Other more sinister and malicious spirits that they could utilize were also mentioned. The tightening box ghost, who goaded people into suicide, and the ghost Ma A Pien, who drew people into addiction and eventual death. So although only ghost tape number 10 is available to the public, this fact sheet outlining a number of different ghosts taken from Vietnamese culture suggests there were a variety of psychological tactics used in the tapes to support their campaign. But although creepy, there was not much evidence to suggest that the tapes were particularly effective in terrorizing the North Vietnamese. Tactics like this often had mixed results, and it's unlikely that the Viet Cong and NVA weren't aware that the Americans were behind the voices in the dark. Already accustomed to the psychological acts of warfare used by the U.S., leaflet dropping and propaganda broadcasts, it suggested that as soon as they heard these disembodied voices creeping through the jungle, instead of responding in fear, the Viet Cong immediately fired in their general direction towards where they believed the enemy soldiers were hiding. In some cases, U.S. soldiers abandoned this ploy almost immediately in favor of just blasting out popular American music of the time to disorient their enemy instead. That being said, hearing disembodied voices and creepy, terrifying sounds playing through the darkness is an effective scare tactic whether you believe they're really the souls of your fallen comrades or not. As one Viet Cong commander said, even though they knew the tapes were false, the audio messages were hard to ignore. But other eyewitnesses claimed they were effective. Raymond Deitch, commander of the U.S. 6th PSYOP Battalion said, The tape was so effective that we were instructed not to play it within earshot of the South Vietnamese forces, because they were as susceptible as the Viet Cong or the NVA. While we don't know the validity of the statement, it's certain the tape sowed a certain degree of fear and uncertainty, and even when they didn't, if the Viet Cong immediately fired in the direction of the sounds, they gave away their position, allowing the Americans an insight into their troop layout and where to attack. While these tactics would not win or lose a war, psychological warfare played an important part in demoralizing and distracting the enemy. The Vietnam War finally ended in 1975, although the Americans withdrew a bit earlier in 1973, ending one of the greatest acts of psychological warfare the world has ever seen.